Hi, you're probably saying, where is he now? Well, I'm standing by the Sturgeon River Falls in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is very near the little town of Alberta, Michigan. Follow me. This is US Highway 41, near its northernmost point. Did you know that it is said that Henry Ford was traveling down this road from his summer house in Pequamming, Michigan, when he asked his driver to stop by this small creek? He then said this would be a great spot for a town. A year later, in 1935, Ford bulldozers arrived and started to construct this site. The town was named Alberta after the daughter of F.G. Johnson, who was then the manager of the Upper Peninsula operations for the Ford Motor Company. The town consisted of 12 houses, a reception building, two school buildings, a service garage, and a sawmill. Only 14 people were needed to operate the entire mill, but about 22 were actually employed to do so. The mill could cut 16,000 board feet a day, which was used in other Upper Peninsula facilities to fabricate wooden parts for automobiles. The mill is constructed in an old style, but utilizes a bandsaw, which is much more conserving on the amount of cut in a board. It all has to do with the thickness of this blade. The mill was really designed for softwoods, but much of the timber milled here was also hardwood. The sawdust went right back into the old furnace boiler via a conveyor that went under the machinery. The larger trimmings like this went to heat the workers' homes, a great example of efficiency. Each worker at the mill was allotted two acres of farmland, but because of the abundancy of deer and various other wildlife, plus poor soil, the crops were always badly damaged, and the farming aspect never really worked. The actual mill was not a high output facility, but the site was really a great public relations tool. It represented, especially to Henry Ford, the ideal town to live in. This is what is known as Ford Lake. It's really Lake Plumbago. It was dammed up so the town of Alberta had an ample supply of water for the mill and also for firefighting. This entire town was created with conservation and the environment in mind and is living proof that Ford was an innovator in these early revolutionary techniques. Selective lumbering is still being researched and practiced on this site. The mill operated until 1954, after which it was donated along with nearly 2,000 acres of land to the School of Forestry and Wood Products at Michigan Technological University. In 1997, the Ford Motor Company donated funds to help develop the site into a public access historical area. Henry Ford would be proud that his little model town is still flourishing. While we're here, let's go about 15 miles north up US 41 and visit Henry Ford's summer home at Pequamming. This is the town of Pequamming, situated on a bay off of Lake Superior. This is an old lumbering town that Henry Ford purchased lock, stock, and barrel back in 1923. Now, one of the assets that also went with the sale was 40,000 acres of prime hardwood forest. The mill could cut 60,000 board feet of lumber per day in order to supply the entire Ford automotive empire. The Ford town employed 300 workers, which was just about everybody in the town. This beautiful home on the shores of Lake Superior also became Henry Ford's when he bought the town. In actuality, Henry Ford only spent several days each summer at this dwelling. During the school year, the home was used for children's household arts and training programs. You know, being in this living room, you can just imagine Henry Ford relaxing, looking out over the lake, and forgetting the worries of running one of the largest companies in the world. 
The Ford Bungalow Home is now being operated as a bed and breakfast facility, and it's also utilized for small business gatherings. This is Bob Krepke for FCN's Did You Know?